Hello team and welcome to another Snake Sunday stream. I'm Corey and today we're going to be streaming some Battlesnake again. Um, Battlesnake team just dropped some new cool stuff this week that we want to play with. Uh, they just dropped the ability to create custom maps. Uh, so this is what's going to look a lot like the Summer League map it seems like called Arcade Maze made by the team. Um, but the cool part that we're going to explore today is now there's an ability for any developer to create their own map with some little go. Um, and we're going to do that today. We're going to make a little map that hopefully makes us a little maze, a single player maze that our snake can uh, run through. And we will see how it goes. Um, so I haven't been doing good about this on my streams, so I thought I would take a second just to talk about what Battlesnake is, since that's what we're going to focus on today. Battlesnake is an online competitive multiplayer game where, you know, you write a little web server that controls one of these snakes and tells it uh, where to move, uh, which direction to move and when. Um, so you do that by making a web server that gets the whole game every turn and decides whether it wants to move up, down, left, or right. And uh, that's basically it. Um, today we're going to be looking at the other half of kind of the game engine, how the game runs, and we're going to make a new map. Um, so yeah, we're going to use some maze generation algorithms. I was on Wikipedia earlier looking up some stuff. Um, so yeah, let's just jump on in and see what we need to get started to make our own map today. Um, so this is the PR that actually adds the arcade maze map to the rules repo um the rules repo also has a cli that we're going to be using to run games um so here's this nice little readme about how to make maps uh ways to customize the game board independently of the pipeline of game rules so we're not going to have to worry about food and hazards spawning and things like that um and yeah how to write a map we'll need to gener generate a new go type that implements game map and register it under a unique identifier. Um, we need to be able to return an ID, which is the, the identifier. Um, some meta attributes currently, that's map name, author, and description. We can do that. Um, and then here's where the methods that we actually need. So we need set up a board. This generates a new board. It's responsible for placing all snakes, food, and hazards. An initial board state is passed in that will be initialized with width, height, and snakes with IDs, but no bodies. Setup board should not modify this board state, but instead call the methods on maps editor to place snakes and optionally foods and hazards. Update board, call to update an existing board every turn. For a map that doesn't spawn food or hazards after initial creation, this method can be a no up. For maps that just do standard random food spawning, delegating to one of the existing maps is a good way to handle that. Awesome. Um, and here's how we're going to run our new map. Um, and the CLI has some really nice uh, visualizations now with some, some ASCII art, or you can opt into some color modes. Um, so that's awesome. I was actually having a little bit of problems with the colors. Not problems. Uh, my terminal was just flickering when I used them. Um, so we might stick with the ASCII ones for today, but we will see. Um, so to get started, let's actually just get a game running so I'm gonna actually run a game here this is just me getting my snakes up and running sorry let me reposition my mic so I don't have to look through it um, hopefully that still sounds good let me know in chat or anything if it doesn't and how the music volume is um, definitely come say hi if you're hanging out in chat I'm um, okay so we got my snakes running over there um, let's make this bigger so everyone can see it nice and good um, okay, so this is the rules repo. I actually have this dev1283 pulled down. That is this branch. Oh, what are you doing, Bobby? You messing up all the things on my desk? Leave them alone. Bobby wants to play with all the all the things on the bookshelf up there. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Do I need to push things back so you can't get them? Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Um, so I have this branch pulled down, so I should just be able to start running a game. Um, so I actually just am going to run this arcade maze map um, as a solo game with one of my snakes just to see how it all looks. Uh, so there's a Battlesnake CLI now. Um, I've already done the compilation for it at the moment. 
Um, so we're gonna play. Let's do a solo game with a map of arcade. I think it's dash. Let's find out. Do do arcade underscore maze. Um, we're gonna view the map. We're gonna let's try it in color this first time, just so we can see what it looks like. Um, so I have a snake called Frank. Famished Frank. I mean, he just goes for the nearest piece of food, and I think that'll work really well with this. Um, I forgot, I have to set the heights and the width. The width of 19, heights 21. Um, those are just the sizes of the arcade maze map. Awesome. Um, oh, okay. So the other thing that I forgot to do here is I like giving this a delay because my snakes, especially Frank, runs really quickly. Um, and so without a delay, the CLI kind of just like blurs through 300 turns right away. Um, so let's give it a, let's make it take a second. Hey, there we go. Oh, and the colors are nice and not flickery here. Oh, I did make one mistake with the CLI usage. Um, you can see that sometimes Frank is clipping through these these they're supposed to be walls um but how the walls are implemented in this is that they're really just hazards with the damage set to 100 and because of how all of this works the damage actually isn't set in the map definition it's set like you know in for me in the cli so right now i'm probably only taking 14 damage going through these walls when we want to set it to 100 which would be instant death and then they'll actually behave like walls and not um some hazard sauce uh, but this visualization is actually working really well with only one snake. Bobby jumps down from being a terror to all the, the bookcase items. Um, okay, so I'm going to stop this for the moment so that I can do... I think it's hazard damage per turn. Let's set it to 100. And now I bet... Oh. Oh, he did try to go through a wall, but died immediately. So, you know, that'll work. Oh, that's fun. Frank probably doesn't know um, about wrapped mode, which is kind of funny. I didn't think about that. Um, so eventually we might have to uh, make Frank know about wrapped. Oh, hey, chat. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Didn't see you guys right away. Hey, Brad and Oddwire. I will definitely let you know what I think of the maps API. Um, yes, I thought about that last night, uh, that we might need for hazard damage setting that the maps control. Oh, Bobby, you're just being a menace, aren't you? Um, yeah, it did make it did feel weird to me that the hazard wasn't controlled by the map and was something I had to pass in through the CLI. Wasn't a problem, obviously, but was a little bit of like you know a, a strange interface there, especially when you know the hazard maze and the mazes that I'm gonna try to make today really do want them to behave as walls, not as um, hazard sauce. Um, though you could do some cool cheating if the maps allow you to clip through the walls. <laughs> um, so. I want to make this maze, um, and the reason Frank didn't do good here is because he doesn't know about wrapped. So do we want to... We're not going to worry about that right right now. I do think eventually these mazes might want to wrap around and take advantage of that when we start generating them. Um, but I don't want to do that right now because I'm not positive how much effort it'll take to make Frank understand wrapped. And uh, I want to make some mazes today. So I think we're going to get started with that. Um, okay, so we have our long CLI command, and this will run uh, right now an arcade maze map. Um, and we have it all set up, so we have it to view the map. We're going to do color since it's working really well. I really like this new uh, color CLI. Um, so yeah, I think we're good to get started. I'm going to just put this on my clipboard in case I need it there. And uh, let's fire up an editor and take a look at the code here. Oops, let's do the right kind of the right key combinations okay okay so we're gonna make a new map um this is the readme that we were just looking at uh let's look at standard just because i'm curious to browse around a little bit um so we're gonna make a different map we're probably gonna make a maze map or a quarry maze map or something like that 
we will register it. And then we'll go about with setup and do the updating. Awesome. This is relatively nice and easy. I like it. Okay. Um, so let's just make a new... It's gonna brand it because I feel like maze is just not super descriptive. I could call this the solo maze. I'm just gonna call it the me maze at the moment. Um, what does an empty one look like? Empty? Hey, Bob, stop messing with all the stuff. Uh, is empty really pretty much the same as standard? Which is fine. Um, but the only difference is that standard... Oh, standard does a uh, food spawns, which makes sense. Um, and empty is just going to be a completely empty board. But empty is exactly what I want to copy then, basically. Um, okay. Corey J maze map. Get all started. Um... I think this was underscores, right? Yeah, they did underscores. We'll do underscores. Um, I bet these have to be the same. Because it wouldn't make sense for them ever not to be. Can I do this? I do not know how Go works, and we're not really gonna look it up. We're not. We're just gonna dump, jump into things. Um, I want to call mit this method from here, so I don't have to repeat myself. Uh, so let's figure out how this ID method is used. Yep, that wasn't the most helpful way to go about that, but I bet it's in somewhere around registry or something like that. So we can get the map by ID. Okay, so this really is just the registry. It doesn't do too much with it. But I really think I could... I bet I would have to create one of these. Oh, 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 oh. I see. So I can do this. Oh, I probably can't call it a map. Um, maze map. Uh, well, it's actually not an empty map. That's what I copied from. Okay, so I need one of these. This then is going to be maze map dot id, hopefully, and then this I can pass maze map. Um, go conventions is probably exactly not how I did this. Oh no, I don't have a go language server installed. I bet there is a go language server um, that I could set up. That'd actually probably be a really good idea. Um, okay, I might go do that. Uh, but let's see. Let's fill out some of this first. Solo. Um, maze. Where you need to find the food. We'll add a much better description once we get um, going. This is not an official Battlesnake map. This is a uh, branded Cory map. Cory J.A. Okay, um, copy snakes from the temp board state. Oh, interesting. It does that by making it play snakes automatically. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, that's fine for now. I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, so, well, let's just read what it's doing here. Setup board. It gets a random number for turn zero because that's where we are in setup. We're making a string array with the length. I don't know what the middle parameter to this is. Okay, we probably do want a language server. Um, we loop through the snakes. We just add their IDs to a thing. Um, and then we call this play snakes automatically method. And that's what takes in our thing. Okay, so really the point of, play, of using play snakes automatically is just to get um a good placement we take them out of that board state and put them back here that's a little awkward it's like totally fine but like maybe editor just needs a play snakes automatically method that can just do all of this for you because 
This is just a little, um... Okay, so maybe I should just look at Arcade Maze. That's pretty reasonable. Um, thank you for the tip. Uh, yeah, it wasn't bad at all, right? It was just the, the slight, uh, like, funkiness of moving some of the objects around. I'm also just not super familiar with Go, so a lot of this is just gonna be me, um, you know, doing just as much Go learning as I need to, to, to get this working. Um, but yeah, a lot of this is what I want. I think I'm gonna do some custom size verification. I'm definitely gonna want a custom snake check thing, um, because I don't want any number of snakes to be on the board. So let's actually just, um, okay, we're gonna take just a break, uh, for just a second, MVIM, LSP, config, go, um, I just want to want to steal a go config for my editor so that I can actually, um, where is the configuration? Where does it just tell me the whole list of the things? Do, do. There we go. Go lane. Um, both, both lint server and client. There we go. This is the one I wanted. I want their, their Google one. Okay. Let's go to my dot files really quick. Go to the Lua files. Whoa. Uh, okay. There we go. It is having some problems though. Um, but that's okay, because all I really want to do is... Going LSP. Yep, that. Plan is to key off length to know when to switch up the maze. Um, haha. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I had thought about this for a little bit last night, Brad, and um, that's actually a better answer than what I came up with. So we're probably gonna go with your answer. Um, the sillier answer I thought of was we could reserve a few hazard bits, uh, a few hazard things as bits and always flip them the same way to like kind of give us a, some state to play with. Um, and then we just have to maze around those bits, basically, um, which could be kind of interesting. But your idea is way better for actually, um, just doing the, the one thing that we need to do. Um, but it does sound kind of fun to reserve some, to reserve some hazardous bits. So, uh, we, we might do that eventually. Um, okay, so let's see if that just magically works. Um... Sorry, while I do some go, go setting up here. Um, awesome. Let's see if I now have a little bit more. Does it want to tell me what anything is yet? Oh, okay. So I don't have the go language server installed. What is like, how do I do that? Uh, no, not from source graph. Yeah, there we go. This one. Go, please. Uh, installation. Just tell Go to install the new thing of Go, please. I'm just going to keep calling it Go, please. I like that. Yeah, I do like the state of baking. Or I do like the idea of baking some state into the map. Um, just because that sounds really fun. It's kind of like how I really enjoy the idea of using a shouts as state, just because it seems really nifty. Um, so I like it. Okay, have we finally got... Aha! We've got an LSP. 
Ooh, okay. Can't use map as game map value in argument. So that's a fun one. If I just do this, is it happy? No, I still can't. Okay, well, so that probably wasn't my problem then. Um, and let's go through and get rid of some of these other errors that I'm finally getting. Um, we're gonna, like, just copy empty at the moment. Uh, we might change this up to be a better, uh, you know, copy from Arcade Maze later. But this right now, uh, should work. Still, oh. And now it's okay with this? Oh, because it probably makes sure that it checks the interface. That's that's nifty. That makes sense. Cool. And so now that it implements all the methods, it's, it's like, yeah, you can use me for this. Um, awesome. Uh, I wonder if register map doesn't need to take in the ID because it can just call the dot ID method on the maze map. Um, ooh, we're in an open source repo. Um, get I oh, because it's not get ID. I just like Copilot drive for me too much. Well, that was easy. Um, I'm definitely gonna have broken the other maps, but uh, I could probably just go fix them real quick. Uh, Battlesnake people watching along, feel free to, like, tell me now or in PR that this is a bad idea. I'm probably gonna just keep rolling with it for the moment, because it seems fun. Uh, but I don't actually have strong feels that this is the right way to do it. Um, but now we don't have to repeat ourselves. Cool. Uh, let's just steal the... Thing of how to build the CLI. Oh, too far back. Okay. Compile from source. There we go. That's the one we were looking for. Oh, this is not the right directory for the go. Uh, that just led me to my uh, rust snakes. Too many arguments. Uh, Registry go. Hmm, now there's going to be more things that break, but that's okay. I can go fix. Oh, there's not. Uh, this method isn't really called. Not positive if that's good or not everything's using global registry more manually it's fine just exploring cool i can get it to compile now um i guess we should uh get a game loaded up with okay so is uh, my server still running over here play um yeah and we're gonna do frank uh, same size? Yeah, sure. Actually, no, we're gonna do a bigger board. It'll go 25 by 25. Uh, that's the one thing with this. I think we're gonna make some relatively big boards. Um, and you know, that'll be fun. The only benefit I've seen so far of the ID representation is that it allows the test to catch copy-pasted maps that didn't have their registration updated. Oh, fair. Yep. Yep, that's a really good point. And... Snake self-collision? Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, well, two things. One, this is hard to see because of my editor, so there we go. Um... And two, I think this is working great, except that Frank, the snake that it's running with, when there is no food on the board, has no idea what to do, and runs into himself. Um, let's see what else we can do here. Like, let's see if Devin... I don't remember if Devin can run. Nope, Devin also just will 
blow up if there's no one else on the board, it looks like. Um, Amphibious Arthur. Amphibious. There we go. Uh, yeah, okay. Arthur at least will, you know, do, do something. So that seems to be working. Let's see if we can spawn some food. Or actually hazards. We want hazards at the moment. Um, so actually, I'm going to copy this command, close this, I want another one of these full screen up, because I think that'll be the easiest way to do this. Yay! Okay, back to the editor. Um, we're also going to need the, the, the script to uh, compile it, this one get that right in the bash history so now i just have those two commands and actually let's do this 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 and now i have one that will build it and then play the thing um i guess i probably actually want to do an and and here instead of a semi so that if the first thing if we fail to compile we don't actually start a game um oh cool so someone's blowing up at some point but that's okay um oh yeah that's Devin trying to find an opponent that makes sense yeah Devin isn't gonna work without opponents solo games um arthur and frank can do solo as well um but okay so i have my id changed for no apparent reason really but it's there and we have an empty map let's add let's first just add a food anywhere love it um I'm not sure that's exactly what I wanted copilot I'm also not sure if editor.place moves is the thing copilot copilot you really might have let me down on this one um I want maps then I want the read me um in the new map read me do 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 and yep but i want to use maps.editor okay so i guess i should just look at the code for that i think that's going to be in here here's the interface here's editor perfect add food and add hazards they just add a point Okay, that's why that was totally wrong. Add food, takes a point. Okay, um, point, rules point. Is that valid, go? Um, except I don't want that. Let's place one at three, three every time. Uh, hopefully that's not where my snake ever gets placed. We'll see. Hey, there's a piece of, piece of food. Um, and then if I switch back to Frank because now I have a piece of food oh cool I never even changed the name awesome and now when he eats the food he's just gonna immediately stop oh he's gonna just circle for a while okay well have fun Frank um no more foods are gonna spawn though so I don't think you're gonna get very far completed after 119 turns yeah so you just starved yourself but that's okay we got the map okay so now we have a last board state settings and an editor so now we can go crazy here so yeah what do i want to do so i right i guess um let's see what do i want to do right now just to play around with this i think what i want to do is i want to spawn a food in three three and then a food in another position let's say like what we're doing we're doing like a 25 by 25 board let's go with like 2020 in the opposite corner we're definitely not going to do both of those at the same time um and we're gonna do an update board we want last board state food uh can i like ask yeah i think food's a thing of the variables not used yes dot length uh, mod two. Uh, if length equals zero, sorry. 
because that's what we want to do if there's no food uh well we can definitely just do that uh oh yes we're in go i think it's more like this yeah okay so now we're always going to add it to 3-3 three, three, except that's not really what i want because i'll probably just like smack that over someone um well actually here's what i could do um let uh no 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 uh potential food variable naming is always so hard so food equals the rules dot point three three yep do i need a semi i don't know where semis go in this language um if last board state dot oh so i don't have an easy way uh because um in my rust code things are indexed by the position on the board so like i can ask for things at 3 3 and get whatever's in that cell back um but that's not how these work so it actually isn't easier for me to do it by checking that way so we're going to do my mod length strategy that i was thinking before um Last board state dot snakes at zero, except I want a snakes at zero dot length, a uh, body dot length apparently. Um, okay, so then we want to mod this by two, and we're gonna say if you're even, we do it in one spot, and if you're odd, we do it in the other. Um, yep, perfect. Um, I don't know if this, these might want to be flipped, um, because you start at three, so then you're going to be empty at four, which is going to be even. Yeah, I want to flip these. So I want the second food spawn to be in this corner. So basically I'm just going to put, uh, Frank back, back and back through the corners, I think. Yeah, 25 by 25. He, woohoo. Oh, this is fun. This is really fun. We can just send Frank back and forth. Do, 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 do. Okay, well, this is working. I don't need to just keep watching this. This is gonna... I don't think Frank's ever gonna stop doing this. I was getting distracted. Um, I was still thinking about this. Uh, saving state in the hazard map idea. I really like it. I think we're gonna do it, even though length is just, like, the way better answer to the problem of how do I keep track of how many levels the snake has gone through. Because the idea is we're gonna make a maze, and every time you get a piece of food, you complete the level, and you basically just start over. Um... Oh, well that's actually fair, so let's practice the starting over bit. Um, right now, I just have it going back and forth between these two things, but let's practice the starting over. Only because I think starting over will give us a good clear food, clear hazards, and then update this. Okay, so I have to just do every- I, when I place a snake, I just like redo the snake. Which is totally fine. Um, just need to remember that. Um, okay, so do I just need like a. Do I just want to do. I think I just want a clear board function. No, it's not validate board. Clear board. need any of that oh nope I need an editor I definitely need an editor I don't actually really know if I need this there isn't a clear snakes method but there is a clear food method and a clear hazard method um do I need these no no I just don't I'll just call them um here I think the idea that I have now is that I can just do when you get the food you do editor 
dot clear food and then editor dot clear hazards and if all i want to do is go back to the beginning i can probably just do it m dot set up board with that let's try it out um so now okay that didn't work turn zero we have no hazards and one food here Huh. Okay. It's just every turn. Okay, so this one's gonna be boringer. Oh, see, so that's interesting. Oh no, it's not. I just got rid of the food. Of course, it's. Of course, that happens. Um. Okay. I will need to work on resetting. But resetting isn't really resetting in my case, because like what I want to do is um. Okay, so if you ate the food, editor dot, oh, I can just mess with the, oh, I can just mess with the things arbitrarily, can't I? Ooh, this is fun. Um, what I'm realizing is I don't have to, um, I don't have to obey the rules of when you grow. I can decide that if you eat a piece of food, your length become some arbitrary number which is pretty fun um no i have to do one of the the array bait the array thingy with bobbers um no let's go to arcade maze shuffling some positions that i wanted something that looked like that Uh, head rules dot point no uh we're putting you at zero zero here's where we gotta have fun i can just make this a way bigger number than it needs to be um there's probably a way to make this like not just me repeating the variable head a lot of times but uh, i don't know what that is oh yeah and then that's fine too i'll just put it here every time at a set length and then it'll just go back and forth between these other bits of food let's try this out and boom Ooh. game completed game completed why game completed if I just don't mess with this, it'll just keep going back and forth. Okay, so. So let's always go back up to 100 health because that makes the most sense. Yeah, I don't really understand why this is um, breaking things. All I'm doing is taking my whole snake and placing them somewhere else. That. See, but it printed out. But then it says game completed. Why? Why is the game completed after 24 turns? Oh, cool. So I'm not going crazy, Brad? Hee hee hee. I'll do some debugging, though, because that is what we do. And I'm just getting this one. Game completed after. I don't get the winner or the draw. So this happens in a solo game. Cool. Um... 
Okay. That is true. So we printed the map. Uh, I'm, delays, those aren't relevant to me. So we must know we're done by now. So like, how do we, why do we know we're done? Is game over? Okay, so we're doing solo. So solo is game over. Game over solo. I wish we could see elimination cause. Well, we can maybe make that happen. I'm not positive how easy it is, but we, we have elimination causes. Um, how do I get them into my CLI? Do, 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 do. So like what I'm seeing is game completed after X turns. Uh, elimination cause is this. Um, so we know we're in solo. So can I just do something like game state dot Happy, happy Sunday defines. Um, glad to have you. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Um, we are working on making a new single player maze in um, Battlesnake. They have the new, uh, new map functionality and we're trying to abuse that to um, make, a, make a maze. Um, right now we're struggling with um, I'm trying to place the snake in a new spot, and it gets eliminated. Um, Oddwire might have a theory, though. It looks like it's ending the game one turn early. I think I might know what's causing it. Cool. I'm going to keep getting this debugging output because it seems really helpful. Um, game set date is, like, just, I don't think, what I'm looking for here. Where, where, Where is the elimination stuff actually stored? So there is a board... State. Yeah, I do think I want board state. Oh, it makes sense. I'm literally. Wait, okay. Yeah, board state. Oh, I just was just being silly. Uh, do you just not like being on multiple? Oh, no. You just don't like that I uh, didn't actually tell you where to put the thing in. Cool. Eliminated cause nothing. Oh, well, I have an interesting theory. I wonder if it's doing is it doing an elimination check after I place the snake and it's noticing that I put them all in the same spot and I'm dying? Um, I also have a snakes in game. I have a theory as well that, um, ugh, I don't, I don't know printf syntax very well. Uh, Board state dot snakes. I have a feeling there's not any snakes here. Uh, yeah, I know. But like, I, I don't know what the printf for integers is. Go printf integer. I thought it would be I. D. D. Okay, D is not decimal. Thanks, computers. Um, I have a theory this thinks there's no snakes a lot. Oh no, snakes in game one. I left my snake stream off by demonstrating why doing the full Hamilton path expansion is too time complex for a live battle snake. Thinking min max next time. Ooh, I've got a good min max article if you're if you're looking. Um, can I print that snake's body? I for sure can. Uh, well, maybe. He he he. I... I definitely can. Let's figure out how to actually do that and go. I didn't think that was gonna be happy with me. Um... Go! Print array! V's? Some of the V's? Ah, uh, okay, so I should probably just use V's for all of these. Let's make my life easy. Yeah, V is V is the smart one. Thank you, Brad. It knows what it... It will do the right thing for each thing, I think. 
and uh, uh, so it has my that's the body I gave it um I ignore my eliminated cause I I screwed up the the thing um but yeah that's one two three four five six seven eight nine that's nine I bet that's how many things I typed into my uh my maze here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, yep. I have a theory. Well, it's, a, it's weird that elimination cause doesn't get filled out, but that could just be because of a weirdness in the solo rules. I think I might have seen that before. Um, it's a kind of a guess, but I, I feel like I've seen it. Uh, what do you, you just don't want me to do that? I can just get rid of the whole thing. Oh, cool. Nifty. Yeah, okay. So I don't think I can restack a snake. Um, I think elimination is running after that. So I, whenever I try to restack a snake all at the same place, I'm going to die. Um, but that's okay. I can just not do that. Cool, so yeah, this is just going to run infinitely. The setting the health back up uh, seems to work fine. Okay, so that just... Like, it would be kind of nice to be able to stack snakes again, but it's not the biggest deal in the world. Um, yeah, it's got to be the self-collision detection. That's what I'm thinking. Um, obviously, I didn't, like, check how exactly the, the code paths get there, but that definitely seems like it's what's happening. Um... Okay, that's fine though. Um, though it does, it's a little interesting when we think about using the length as the storage though. But I guess we're probably not going to do that because I really like my using hazards as bits idea, anyways. Um, I'll log a bug unless Oddwire already has. Yeah, it. Yeah, uh, totally up to you whether you guys want to call that a bug or not. It like isn't totally crazy that a map can't double that that can't double or triple stack a snake. Oh, wait a second. That's also an interesting point. What if I actually try doing something that's like more, I guess this thing might not care, but what if I actually only do three? Um, I'm just thinking for instance, my representation of stuff in Rust or mine in Penelope's only knows how to double and triple stack. It definitely doesn't know how to, how to quadruple stack or you know, a nine stack of snake like I was doing. So let's see what happens. Nope, same thing. Okay, so this is just self-elimination even when they're stacked. Um, I also might not want to do... I might not even want to do crazy number of stacks anyways, because that would break my representation. But, you know, I guess I could fix my code to make it work with this new maze if needed. Um, stack fix are never legal, we just don't run that check on turn zero. Yeah, well, get, yeah, when your head stacked, right? Because you're always going to have your tail stacked when you eat food, but you're, pr that's pretty reasonable. Um, so actually, maybe that's the trick, though, right? Maybe, maybe that's what I want to do if I'm doing something, right? I could probably do this followed by as many of these as I want, right? As long as my head isn't colliding, it doesn't matter if my tail is really stacked. Yep, yep. We're on the same page there, Brad. Let's double check to see if it actually does what I think it will, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so that might be what I want to do, because then I can preserve the length easily. Well, again, I might not need to preserve the length because it sounds like a lot of fun to uh, use the bit board thingy. Um, but this is doing what we expect it to. Um, I've just created an infinite loop though because uh, never gonna move on from this point. Um, so that's fun. It's also fun that I can create infinite loops for my snake now because you know that's something I've always wanted to be able to do. Um, awesome. Okay, so how do I use this knowledge? to help me out. I think I'm just really getting familiar with the mazes or with the map here. I think I could think about maybe generating a maze now. 
Um, and that's going to be fun because I've, I've got teleporting the snake around. That works reasonably. Um, I'm going to have to figure out how to make a raise and go better, but that's just a, that's just figuring out go. Um, and I can add food. I can add hazards. I can remove food. Actually, what's the interface for that? Like, I'm just curious. Uh, maps. Game map editor can... Okay, cool. So I can remove a single point. Um, awesome. So let's go look at some... The Wikipedia for maze generation. Um, I was here earlier. And... I was looking at this randomized depth first search. It's kind of their first one they talk through. Um, and basically how this works, and I think how a lot of these work, is that you... Um, have a cell with walls around it, um, which makes a lot of sense for this, but isn't exactly how the map is in Battlesnake, because I have, um, in Battlesnake, we have the grid, and I can make a wall around things, um, but to, like, I, I lose, um, some, like, pixels, basically. So if I make a 50 by 50 board, and I want to have walls in between everything. I actually don't have 50 cells. I only have something like 25 or 24, uh, depending on how the math works out. I haven't I haven't done the math. Um, here, let's maybe Excaladraw. Oops, Excaladraw. And then I wanted the plus version. That's fine. Whatever. Um, cool. Um, oh, this was the one I was working on last time. Uh, but like this isn't. This was kind of going to be for Monte Carlo. It never actually worked out. Um, so what lots of these like algorithms seem like they're doing is like you have lots of cells. And then like between the cells, you either do or don't have walls. So like, you know, you could draw some walls in between these. And though these now you can't get through these ones um, and stuff like that. But... You know, like here you could get between these and these, but you can't get through the red walls. Um, but that's not how Battlesnake works. Battlesnake works more like this, where we can have, oop, whoa, okay. We can have a cell. Um, we have some cells. I'm going to go a little bigger than three by three this time. We'll go five by five. We have some cells and how we can do walls. is we can like color some. So like I can grab some of these and fill them in. Of course I missed one, uh, but that's fine. We, that, that's fine for the purpose of the demonstration. Um, we can fill them in. So now they behave as walls, but I've lost some like um, granularity of my pixels here, right? Um, I can't put a wall in between every different cell, uh, but that's fine. I don't think that's a huge deal. Um, it just means I have to think about how to do it and how big of a grid we're going to want um, a little bit differently than the examples are here. Um, but randomized depth first search is... Let's just kind of draw this out. And I think I think I know it enough to draw it out. And then we will um, see how that helps us seeing this. So let's... Unfill all of these. Uh, we're at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, four, eight, ten. Okay. This should be a ten by ten grid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I just can't count. Oh, good. Okay, so we have a ten by ten. Um, how this algorithm works is you start. Let's read it. I don't remember. Um, so there's gonna be like a stack that we might have to retrace. That's fine. We'll figure it out. Um, consider being a large grid of cells. Each cell starting with four walls. Okay, so they're doing it with everything starting with four walls. So, if that's how I wanted to do it, 
um, we're going to have to do a lot smaller board or a, a different size board, I think. Um, not watch. <laughs> um, I can't talk, but I think I can diagram this. Um, okay, so like this might be my first cell and it needs to have walls on all sides of it. So to get walls on all sides of it, um, why can't I? There we go. Um, so like all of those need to be shaded. And if that's shaded, then that, and then that, and then that. Okay, so I'm one off. I need a, so we're going to an 11 by 11 grid. That's what Battlesnake uses. Um, that should be 11 that way. And then that should be 11 that way. Now I should be able to do this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one are gray. Hmm, is this gonna work? Let's, let's keep diagramming this out. I think I'm using way too many. Like, I don't think thinking about it as cells with walls is gonna work for Battlesnake super well, because to do that, I'm just taking away like so many pixels on my board to draw a maze. Cause like this is the wall between these two, which means on an 11 by 11 board, we're down to one, two, three, four, five. Hey, Jonathan Arms, how's it going? Um, uh, great question. Thanks for asking what we're working on. So, um, Battlesnake released the new support for maps. So we can encode, um, define new maps that you know set up the board in a specific position and then update the board when things happen so we're going to use this new map functionality to make some program programmatically generated mazes um at the moment we've just kind of explored how you can use maze or use the map thing so right now you know i have one that spawns a, spawns food in a certain location um and then when you get the food it spawns a different food and right now we have it just infinite looping at the bottom it, you know once you keep collecting this food it just loops um, but what we're working on in the drawing program over here was I wanted to figure out a way to, um, make a random maze. Um, and I was reading these, this maze generation article on Wikipedia. And one of the things that I was realizing is most of the algorithms that they talk about there think about cells with walls in between them. Um, but to get Battlesnake to fit into that, I would really be cutting the number of pixels I have um, by down in like half. Uh, Cause like, I'd have to like almost checkerboard it here. Let's delete all of these. I will make them by copy paste. So we're going to have an 11 by 11 board at the end of the day. They're all gonna have to do this. Uh, two, three, four, five. And now, really, you could, I can think of these white ones as the cells and everything else as the walls between it, which will work, right? And then, like, I could remove this wall and make it a part of the maze and remove this wall and make it part of the maze and kind of keep doing this. Um, and that's kind of what the maze generation algorithms do. And then eventually I realized that, uh, I reached a dead end and I go back and backtrace through it. Um, and I don't think that's going to not work, but it's really, really limiting the number of pixels I have to work with. But maybe that's also just how Battlesnake mazes are going to go, right? Because I can't draw walls. I can just use a cell as a hazard damage as a wall. Um, I do kind of think we're already going to be pretty limited in pixels yeah i just need a huge board that's why i was already starting with 25 by 25 because i knew i was gonna need a large board um and i did check this morning and the cli will let me go up to like 100 by 100 um so i think that's basically what we're gonna have to do let's just try this out though yeah so this is when i was getting flickering um if I make my board too big, the color mode starts going a little, a little flickery on me. Um, but this one works okay. Uh, is, am I, is my snake even on this board? Oh, there he is. Yeah, the board's so big. 
Um, but like, yeah, I think we're gonna need something like this. Um, I think you need more open spaces, probably. Oh, that's a really good point. Um, I hadn't actually really thought of what happened here. Oh, could I not get to the food in the amount of turns? Oh, that's amazing. The mo maze was too big and I couldn't even get to food. Um, that's kind of hilarious. I didn't think about that one. Um, yeah, that's fair. I actually hadn't thought about that. This kind of maze might not be the best suited for Battlesnake, Jonathan, because like that, you're, that's just a really good point. Like this isn't, um, yeah, I, I do probably want more open spaces. I don't want necessarily just one corridor -y things. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay. I think that's right. Um, but that does kind of put me back in square one in terms of thinking about how to generate the maze, which is totally fine. I think I just need to like come up with a different strategy for that. And I don't really know how I want to go about thinking about this. Um, okay, let's just read through this again to get a sense and idea of how this worked and then Agreed, I might need more open spaces. Ah, so these aren't actually meant for PvP. This was going to be single player, so like, um, it'll work with a maze like this, was my idea. Um, but I do kind of agree with you that it might not be the best, but it's definitely not the best for PvP. But that's, um, not what I'm going to focus on right now. We're going to go with a single player, a single player maze. Thanks for hanging out, Brad. Hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, we'll see how far we get in this maze. Um, I have a feeling this maze generation is going to take me a little longer. Um, so we'll probably be back at it again next week. But the, the map stuff was uh, a really easy start. We got something working pretty quickly there. Um, okay. So... So we have a large set of grills, each cell starting with four walls. Starting from a random cell, the computer selects a random neighboring cell that has not been visited. The computer removes the wall between the two cells and marks the new cell as visited. It adds it to the stack to facilitate backtracking. The computer continues this process with a, what, with a cell that has no unvisited neighbors being considered a dead end. When at a dead end, it backtracks through the path until it reaches a cell with an unvisited neighbor, continuing the path generation by visiting this new unvisited cell, creating a new junction. This process continues until every cell has been visited, causing the computer to backtrack all the way to the be back to the beginning cell. We can be sure every cell is visited. I love that Wikipedia just tells me this and doesn't explain why this is true. Um, it kind of makes sense that we'll have touched every node here, but it's just, I like that they're just like, yes, it, it just does happen. Um, so if we just implement it as given, we're gonna overflow our stack is basically what it's saying. Um, the algorithm can be arranged into a loop by storing backtracking information in the maze itself. This also provides a quick way to display a solution by starting at any given point and backtracking to the beginning. Um, I like that idea because I like this. This also provides a quick way to display a solution. Um, that means we could pick where the food goes and just like let it, let it, let it do it. Um, so yeah, I think, I think we might start with this again. Um, only because I don't know, of, I don't, I don't know of other better ways to do this. And I know I could read this article and find them out, but I think it's more fun just to try this first see where we get we're gonna need like a hundred by a hundred maze to make this work maybe we'll start out with like you know 25 by 25 um and go from there i do oops i do think i'm gonna still draw it out a little bit and i think we're gonna draw it out with a smaller board like this we'll do 11 by 11 um okay let's just let's just see how this does five by five is the grid I have here. Okay, so we're gonna take one of these two um, and then we're gonna visit a node. So when it's visited, it'll become green. Um, and like, I probably could give it backtrack information, but that feels like a lot of work for the moment. So we're gonna visit one of these two nodes um, and destroy the wall to get there. 
no more wall you become visited um and i think one important thing if we're gonna do this algorithm like this is that we're not gonna make the wall that we deleted a node because that's just gonna screw things up um but but that's okay um so then we can delete this one i'm picking this one this time and then this guy becomes visited yes yeah, so, so this will work fine um then i could like pick this one delete him this one becomes visited and then that you'd have to follow this around yeah this will be this will be fine and then this only can go this way right so then this one visits the visits this one um okay like this works i think what i might want to do is um kind of imagine it as a five by five grid with the walls and then um and then like translate it into the the um battle snake version um another thing that i want to think about is right now how i have it drawn out i have it with a um with a border around everything and i wonder if i want to do that i wonder if it makes sense to um think about wrap mode and let you wrap around the outside without the border um that might mess with my walls and cell math though because if i have a different board let's just make a different board over here um and let's put these cells back boop 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 okay um but we're gonna think about wraps so we're gonna make all of them the same so like how can yeah see i don't know if the, the wrapped is gonna work with my deleting the deleting walls strategy i could do that if we were adding walls because like i could just just make something into a wall but if we're deleting walls it's definitely going to be easier to have walls around the side that aren't removable and we don't wrap um, yeah, we're definitely going to start there. I want to think about wrap mode eventually, because that sounds like a lot of fun to add to the maze. Um, but for the moment, for the maze generation, I think we're going to not worry about that. Um, and that just, that just seems a little bit easier. Okay, so what we want to do then is we want to think about how we can represent our cells and our edges. Um... And the edges are really just like between two nodes, right? So like if this is zero, zero, um, yep. So like if this one is zero, zero, oof, wow. I cannot draw with a pencil with this thing. Um, okay. So we're not going to do that. That didn't work out well. I could write though. Um, so like we have the zero, zero. Um, and then this would be zero one. I'm not really sure why I'm writing these out anymore. Or one zero x y one zero. Um. So an edge really is just between these two cells. So I could represent it as like a tuple of these two. Um. Starting with the lower value first and the higher value, so they're always sorted. Yeah. How does like is there is there any like do we have any code here? Yeah, probably not. Oh, see, recursive division model. This adds walls. Adding walls is a good idea. Begin with the maze's space with no walls. Call this a chamber. Divide the chamber with a randomly positioned wall or multiple walls where each wall contains a randomly positioned positioned passage opening within it within it man then recursively repeat the process on the sub chambers until all chambers are medium sized this method results in mazes with long straight walls crossing their space making it easier to see which areas to avoid um 
and continue in this manner until the chamber has a width of one cell in each of the other directions. How does this one prove that there's a way to solve the maze? Is everything interconnected always? Oh, I guess that's how mazes always kind of work, right? Oh yeah, I like this strategy. This makes sense. We just draw lines until we come up with a good maze. Ooh, okay. I like this idea. Um, could be a bit interesting to implement, but I like it. Let's try drawing this out in a diagram. Um, we have an empty board here. I like it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we'll, like, draw a wall this way. Boom. You're now a wall. And then... Boom. You're now a wall. And then we, like, take some... Every part of this wall gets an opening through it. Uh, except openings, I guess, should just go back to being... Clear. Okay. And then for each of these, I subdivide. So, like, I'm like, okay, well, here we draw a wall. I like this strategy. This seems good. Um, and then, like, maybe we draw a wall here. And then I, like, create some openings again. Yeah, so we're gonna, still gonna get, like, you know, this is still gonna be tiny. But this will work. Um, and then one thing that I can do with the spaces is, like, in this space, a wall can be right at the edge. And that's pretty valid. <laughs> yeah. I like this drawing wall approach. Um... And then like this one and this one then become the ones that I decide need to do that. Yeah. Okay. 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 I like this. I like this a lot. Um. So how do I go about implementing this? Let's see. Okay. So the we're going to be in setup board. Um, what is this doing? This gets some snake IDs for me. Okay, so we're gonna steal some stuff from Arcade Maze, where it does some asserting. Um, we're not gonna assert on that, but we are gonna assert on this. Um, this map requires exactly one snake. Perfect. Um, do like, I guess I should just do like me. Yep. Um, place, nope, we're not gonna place snakes, snakes automatically. Um, no, I wanted to copy this code, put it here. Um, so we place me with lots of tails and health 100 here. We are not doing this anymore. Uh, yep. Okay, this is still going to be our, my same infinite looping thing, but a little bit different. Um, I'm not going to do 100 by 100 just because that's too big to look at. 25 by 25. Uh, ran, declared, but never used. Sure it was. Yay, infinite loop, infinite faster. Awesome. Okay, uh, let's bring ran. I want to at least have that commented out so I can get to it. Um, okay. Okay. We are gonna put my snake on the board. Um, we're gonna do it like that at the first spot 
perfect, and now he's long one. Yay, okay. Um... Yeah, so much better a little faster. Whee! Okay. Um... Replace the board. I'm actually not gonna do food yet. Okay, so... What do we need to do here? Um, I actually don't know. Yeah, we're, you know, we'll, we'll place that there. And you know what? Let's start by saying this is at 25.25. Um, I also then, I guess, should... I am just going to say that it needs to be 25 by 25 for the moment. Just because I... Um, I'm going to do some other hard coding in places. So we're just going to make sure that I don't screw anything up by saying we're always at a 25 by 25 board uh let's actually check that that looks right 25 by 25 oh yep 24 24 yay Boop. perfect nice okay um so now I need to draw some walls. Okay. Um, so what's interesting here is I'm not supposed to modify initial board state. I wonder if what happens if I did. I probably just shouldn't. Um, but what Empty was doing before is it made a new one that it could mess with. And I might want that. Uh, so like, I'm gonna need to be able to call, a, I'm gonna need a function on my maze. It's gonna be called subdivide room. It's gonna take in a board state. Let's call it a temp board state. I think I'm gonna have to like copy things out of it eventually. Temp board state. Yep. Um, do I need settings? No, I don't need an editor here either, and I don't need a room. But what I do need is, um, they're always rectangles, right? So I need the, like, the, um, low point and high point. <laughs> low point equals rules dot point. And a high point. Um, and then we can do uh, m dot subdivide room temp board state 024 perfect um yep so now what i want to do is um so how did arcade maze use the randomness rand how do you use you rand rand dot shuffle i guess i can ask rand what it can do yeah okay so we can get some ints out of it and stuff like that um int that's probably like int inclusive or something int n i wonder what my other options are dots oh int n okay that's it okay int n and shuffle um okay so uh let's see if yeah okay so we can only subdivide if there's like if low point dot x uh, high point first right we're gonna subtract high point dot x minus low point dot x is greater than or equal to four let's try four um so what i'm saying is we can only draw a wall We can only draw a. Uh, so if we're looking at X's. Oh, uh, oh, stop, Battlesnake. I definitely don't have to go look up how the grid looks in this game at all. 
Um, board, board. Wait, where are you gonna show me the thing? There we go. Okay, so, um, if I x is the y axis, f axis. Okay, so if I have an x, that means I've been drawing vertical walls. Vertical wall. If there is enough space. Um, okay, so we're doing this inclusive. So if 0, 0, and 24, like it could draw a wall on this line, and that would be an, a valid decision. Um, so if I do, so if there's 0 there, then 1, 2, 3, 4, that actually means there's three things in the middle. That's fine. Um, okay, so then vertical wall position equals rand oh so i need my rand thing what is this rand thing settings not get rand oh okay so i could just pass settings through oh, i just pass my rand through what is the rand That's how you range over a slice. That's cool, but how do you just range over some numbers? Before range my data structure. Yeah, I, I get that. Um, do do. Oh yeah, man, we're really re using range with arrays all the time. I don't have an array though. I just want like a standard go for loop index. Like, uh, yeah, I could do a for loop. I could do a while loop. I I don't want to do any of these. Go range numbers. Yeah. Man, that really just wants me to write a for loop. Okay, we're writing a for loop. Okay. Um, okay, so vertical wall position is that. So then for x equals low point dot x um i less than or equal to high point at x um boop boop temp board state dot hazards Dot append Yeah. Um <laughs> Temp board state dot hazards equals append. Uh which way does append go, you think? Hemp board state dot hazards on 
awesome. Um, cool. So we added that in. Um, actually, so let's do new. New wall. So we get the make arrays, yeah, exactly. Um new wall. We'll make Go append to array. Ending to a slice. But like you just do exactly what I feel like it does. Okay. to remove a uh, segment to remove equals brand Delete an item from a slice. Everything's called slices. Wait, what? Uh. Wow. Okay. Um. Okay, okay, so now I can... Okay, so we're making a wall. Um, we make our wall by looping through and appending. Um, eventually we just remove a segment from the wall. Um, and then we do the, the literal same thing. The so why? Should I, like, add these all to the hazards first? What am I even doing? Yeah, like, I guess I'm doing temp four. So then I want... Four... Underscore comma E point range new wall. Yep. Hem word state dot hazards. Yeah, append it. Okay, so. Let's see if this works. Um, so in start board, we're going to subdivide room. Um, but then after subdivide room, what I need to do is... Uh, edit, uh, so let's make a function for this. Uh, that's not right now. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to want to eventually. Editor dot uh, clear hazards. And then for that editor place hazard. Set hazard. What's it called? Editor dot add hazard. Okay, let's see what this does. Whoa, that worked beautifully. Um, except it did a horizontal when I thought I told it to a vertical, but um, 
because I kept my X's the same and changed my Y's. No, mm -mm, I did this wrong. Vertical wall position. This wants to be that. Yep. Uh. Wait a second. Okay, we're picking X's, and we want to draw the wall this way. There we go. Uh, that one didn't remove a thing from it. Why didn't it remove a thing from it? Okay, so the removal's not working now. What did I do to break the removal? Because what I was doing before was making it really a bigger... Oh, that one still didn't... Oh, no, it did. It was at the top. Awesome. Okay, so I subdivided in this direction. Now let's subdivide in the other direction. A horizontal wall. Now, basically, all I need to do is replace substitute X for Z. Substitute X for Z. Yep. Substitute Y x globally substitute capital y for x substitute capital z nope capital z for x uh, oh dang that i didn't get work case x dang. i was so close Dang it. Okay, this didn't help me at all. Why? Why? Um. Replace with a Y, replace with a Y. Replace with a Y. That's an X. That's an X, which means those are all X's. Which means this now needs to be that. X is what's moving. The Y is what stays the same. This is not the vertical, though, it's the horizontal walls on the wall position. That's the same. Okay. Uh, Y's, X's, Y's, X's, Y's, X's, everything else is the same. Woo! Uh, is that a double? Nope, that's the same one. That's awesome. Okay. Um, so now... Did... Sub... Divide is false. Open. Did sub divide is true. Then... Did subdivide is true. Return did subdivide. Fooled's not implement error. Yeah, how do I make return types? Yay, return to Boolean. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
oh okay so i actually want to return is like a slice i want to be like Ooh, how do i find oh okay so now i have to actually like figure out how to carve out these these four so you go from two you make some divisions and then you get four um so let's figure out how to do that Uh, so subdivisions give this for a second but I'm gonna want to change this vertical wall position negative one horizontal so basically what i'm trying to do is i'm going to start with both of these initialized to off the board values if they get you like if i set them to something else so then if vertical wall position doesn't equal negative one okay so this one we have both both so need four subdivisions sub rooms I could just freaking recurse here. This might just end up being recursive. Okay, so if we have four four rooms, we go from so we do a subdivide room. Is that right? Uh, okay, so if we're looking at the vertical wall position, that is the one we did with that we chose X's. So we're gonna go from X to this yeah that's the right answer pretty sure uh, um pretty dope if copilot just did that um i filled in the entire board Pretty much immediately. Wow, that's a lot of hazards. Um, um, so many hazards. I think I was duping those lines uh, so when I subdivided I was having each subdivision include one part of the last one um, so let's think about this when I subdivide okay okay so if I'm subdividing like this with a wall here and a wall here. This one's at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5. Uh, way bigger. Okay, so that's 5. And this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So, I need one that goes from 0, 5, and then 6 through the end. Yeah, okay, so from 0 
to five and then six through the end. Zero to five, six till the end. Yeah, so I have four rooms here. So I have from low, low. So I have from zero, zero to vertical wall position, high. Wait a sec. So my high right now is zero, zero. A low is zero zero and my high is 24 by 24 um and if i subdivide i'm gonna have a zero zero so this corner down here is gonna be zero zero Oh my gosh. Um, and like it through. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I don't know these ones yet. I want to make this big so I can see it. Okay. Um, so that's the low X and low Y. Vertical wall as the X. So that's five. High point Y. That's 24. No, that's not right this needs to be this one so it's instead of high point wall it's horizontal wall no because this one's gonna be seven mm -mm, so that's gonna be that point and then we have one starting from Right, we have one starting from vertical wall position plus one, so vertical wall position is six, low is zero, yep, and then we're going up to high x, which is 24. 24. So right now this is 24 by 24. That's not the right answer because this one wants to go from 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, uh, this is 11. So these are both 11. I just don't have to make more things in my thing. Okay, um, 6. So then I want this to be 6, 0, which is this one. But I want it to be this one, which is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10. And then 0, 1, 2, Three, four, five, six. Oh, so high is ten, ten. Uh, so I want to go to ten. So I want to go from high. Okay, so I do want to go to high X. High X, but not high Y. I want vertical minus one. Uh, horizontal wall position. Yep. Okay. And then if I do... Oh yeah, it also never made sense to start here again. Because I already have one starting there. Okay, so I have one starting here. And now I have one starting... There. Vertical wall plus one. Yep. Okay, so I have this one. Um, so now I need to do... 5, 7. So it's going to include all of this. So I want vertical wall... Plus 1. Wait. X. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm looking at the Y right now. Y is horizontal wall... Position... Horizontal wall position. Uh, 
low X. Boop. Horizontal wall. Okay, so that does give me this one. Which is eight. No. Zero. Eight. And I want that to go to zero, one, two, three, four. So that's four. Or ten. Which so low horizontal plus one. Yep. Goes to vertical minus one. To high Y. This one goes from from vertical wall plus one to high x i y. Okay. Oh dang it! Broke something. Um, what is up? That's a fun one. Invalid argument, but that doesn't tell me anything at all. Um. So where, 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 what line number? <laughs> yeah, subdivide rule of line 84. Okay, don't do that. Oh, whoa, is that a maze? Uh, it's a maze, but it's not a solvable maze. Um, but like, when I add the food, Okay, that one's coming up. This, like, I don't want anything to happen in update anymore. And let's add a food to the top corner. Oh yeah, because he can't get there. Yeah, see, so that's what I thought was going to be the problem with this, is... I've created maze-like structures now, for sure. Um, but they don't... They don't connect. Like, this, th this, I can't get through this maze completely. Um... And I think that's because I let it put two walls next to each other. What if I tell it never to put a wall? Okay, I have an idea. So what's happening though is that uh, because of when I subdivide, like this is one subdivision and this is the, another subdivision, and both of those are allowed to place walls like here and here. So then we get two walls next to each other, but I don't want two walls next to each other. So I think what I need to do is change my subdivide logic to not include Um, I think that what I just did is chose my random number to be not on either of the edges. Oh man, that's so that was that one's much closer to being an actual mazeable maze. Man. 
I'm also really pretty confident that Frank will know how to solve this maze if it's solvable, um, but this is not looking like it's creating solvable mazes yet. Yep, not making solvable mazes. Okay, so does the Wikipedia ha article have anything about that? Because, like, I kind of thought this wasn't going to be solvable. Call this a chamber. Divide each chamber with a randomly positioned wall, where each wall contains a randomly positioned passage opening into it. Oh, that's what I'm not doing right. Divide the chamber with a randomly positioned wall. Each wall contains a randomly positioned passage opening within it. Yeah. Well, what if I... I have an interesting idea. Right now I'm trying to do multiple walls at once, but I don't think there's any reason to do that. Um... Um, so like the vertical, uh, horizontal diff, X diff, yep, Y diff, yep, if X diff is greater than Y diff, we have more X space, we do the X direction, else we do the Y direction, we never do both. So now I'm only going to have one or the other of these. So like this is never going to happen. Um, if vertical wall position does not equal negative one. So yeah, we have a vertical wall to play with here. Um, so we made a vertical wall. Let's go to our diagram. Nope, wrong one. Diagram. Um, make a new one. Perfect. Um, you are all see-through. You guys don't exist. You don't exist. You don't exist. You don't exist. Uh, you're gray. Okay, so now I have two things to do. I have here to here and there to there. So if there's a vertical wall, we're definitely going to have two. We're going to go from low to vertical wall. Vertical wall, and then this one is now high Y. Yeah. Ooh. And then vertical wall plus one to high Y. With horizontal wall plus equal one, we do a very similar thing, but not similar because it's backwards, so it might not even. Oops. Uh, probably just don't even want this as an example. It's m dot subdivide room temp board state comma rand comma yep I do want a point okay so my x though I start uh. Yep, I do start at low point next. Okay, that's actually what I wanted. I just didn't realize it. No, 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 no. We're doing a horizontal wall this time. Is that right? I don't know. We're doing a horizontal wall. So if we're doing a horizontal wall, I have two things. Zero, zero. It's always zero, zero. Like, you always start with that. Come on. Low point, Y, two. The X now goes all the way across, and this goes to a horizontal wall. Um, and then we go from horizontal wall plus one to high. High point Y. Oh, man, so close.
We still get this. We still get chambers that don't lead to each other. Does that make sense? Um, okay, so we did a horizontal wall, then we did that. And then we have two chambers, this chamber and this chamber. And so we draw a wall. Yeah, so, so that could then draw that wall. And then I, lo I, I screwed myself over. Okay, so the wall can't be... Like, there's a single point where you can't pick. So if vertical wall position, yeah, so here's the thing. This can just go up here. And this can just go up here. Don't need that. Okay. Um, this still obviously doesn't work though, but we're getting closer. Um, Cause subdivide room um like there's one place you can't pick or do i just need to do the double subdivision from the start because that avoids that problem it just creates a new problem interesting okay um i think i liked actually how i did it before which is unfortunate because i want to undo a lot of this yeah okay um no 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 we do double we, we try to do both Um, so this is the new vertical wall. This is going to be the new horizontal wall. Um, so, wait a sec, is that, oh, I just don't have that here. If length new horizontal wall greater than one. Okay, so I'm moving everything around so that I can. The goal here is to. When I'm deciding where to make cuts, this is where here we make cuts in the walls to do, and this is what we're about to do, um, account for when walls meet. Um, I need to make a cut in each wall when they meet. Um, so we're actually still going back to something more like this. 
But then what we're gonna do, instead of just making one cut on this wall and one cut on this wall, we're gonna make... Probably only need to make three cuts, and that's fair. We don't need to make the fourth cut. Um, we need to make three cuts. So... Um, the problem is though, so I can definitely just do the... <laughs> uh, so like... Removed... Vertical wall... Is just a rules... Dot point... Um, and then, like, I could do the same thing here. No, this is more complicated than it needs to be. All I really need to do is make three cuts. Um, I can be consistent about it. It's fine. Um, okay, let's just, there's only three cases. So there's if that... And the length of horizontal walls greater than one, then there's else. Yep. Those two are fine. Um this it's the both case that we now need to deal with. Um we need to remove three points from the walls. Uh so we can remove one from this one. Yep. Uh, so I think I need to do like an index of, um, go index of, uh, index of slice, yep, there's no, wait, what, doesn't have a straightforward way of writing a function that can operate, oh, gotcha. Okay, so I guess I'm just gonna write another position method, just like I have one of these. Um, I have a function called position that takes in a thing of that, that, yep. Yep, perfect. It's awful that I needed that freaking, freaking go. Um, okay, so intersection point equals a rules dot point. x equals a vertical wall position x is vertical wall position y is horizontal wall position um that's where they intersect um first Horizontal segment to remove equals grand into I um we already took one out of the vertical wall, so we're taking someone out of the horizontal wall. The horizontal wall changes its X's. So it's vertical wall so i have that point so it's um so in their vertical wall we took a piece out of it so i need to take two pieces out of the horizontal one from low point to to x so it's the vertical wall position minus low point x yep Uh, 
Uh, what I really need to do is this. No, 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 no. I have an intersection point. I know that's in my thing. Position equals index equals um, position. Oh, uh, new horizontal wall intersection point. Um, first segment to remove um, mine uh, just index. Second segment to remove is length minus index plus index. Perfect. Um, new horizontal wall. New horizontal wall. We remove one point from the vertical wall and two points from the horizontal wall, one point on either side of the intersection. One one five. Oh, that's literally where I am. Uh, what? What do you mean? Unexpected remove. Unexpected position. Remove this. Unexpected remove. Expecting that. No, that's that's right for that. That's not. That's still not telling me anything. I don't know. Oh, it's down here that it's all wrong. Got it. Um. This is like I didn't even change this. I just made a new one here for this one. Um, index out of range 24 with length 24 at line 157. 157 is just when I remove something. 157 goes to 118. subdivided once why don't i subdivide more did i comment out my subdivide more logic totally did So sometimes it does. Um, and that did the yeah, that did that right. Okay, okay. Okay, let's put the subdivide back in. I think. Let's see if I can ever get it to run. Yeah. See, so now I'm just gonna break it. Uh, it's always 118. 
yeah this is this isn't this this wasn't a great great idea um if index equals equals zero or index equals equals length that minus one Okay, so if I find the index, if the intersection is at the end, I don't actually really have an intersection in the case of this. So I just want to, I just need to do one. I only need one cut. Oh, whoa, okay. Definitely didn't want that to happen. No. Okay. Um... So if I cut it now though, like the thing is that's just is gonna mess with my indexing. Do I need to find position again then? Yeah, that's what I need to do. Didn't, that wasn't a complete maze? Are you sure? Ah, oh, that's okay. Okay. Well, let's, what if I do this again? What if I add the plus one, plus one back in? Oh, okay. So I didn't want the plus one. I didn't think I wanted the plus one. Oh. I also don't want that. Oh, it's looking. If it's looking pretty good though, um, but it's not a full maze quite yet, at least, or at least that's what my snake thinks. Yeah, if it was wrapped, if if we could wrap around, this would definitely be a completable maze. Uh, let's think through this intersection case again, because I feel like that's what's screwing me up. So, what happens if we did this? What if this was the wall we decided to draw? And this was the wall we decided to draw? We really only need to make one cut. Like, we just need to make one cut. We divide these subrooms. And, like, maybe make a cut here. And then we're totally fine. So if there's two walls, we take a segment out of the vertical wall, just chop it off. And then we look in the horizontal wall for the index where they meet. And then we remove one of them if the intersection point do I want it in there if the intersection point wasn't the end like maybe it is now Like these look these look like so close to being to being working maps. And if I could wrap around, they definitely are. Oh, but it's so close. Why does this not work and why does their subdivision method usually work? Cause now after I've subdivided, I'm subdividing again.
Oh, I did that. Oh, but I never did that problem. Where, like, you can't subdivide. Because now if we did subdivision here, right, this thing could totally vertically be like, yeah, you, you're my, you're my, you're my spot. Right? How does this, how do they avoid that here? Do they? It like doesn't seem like they do. Well, one thing I can do is I can make my fourth wall cut. that's my problem though um like we're really close to having like we have a maze it like looks very mazy um okay let's let's like do something different for a second i'm like pretty positive that if i were able to wrap around this board i would be able to solve this maze in like four seconds um so it's a little cheating but uh i think i want to look at that especially because it might be really easy to do so i'm in my frank source code now and if i'm really lucky Okay, so one interesting thing is that, um... Maybe it's fine, though. Uh... Let game info... Game.gameinfo... If... Game info... Uh... I think it's game type. That's what that thing is saying. Uh, hops this yeah but it is different <laughs> Okay, so if it's wrapped, give it a game. Game equal uh, battle snake game types colon colon compact representation colon colon wrapped cell board from wire game ID map of game, a reference to game. Yeah, okay. Um, Um, 
I'm actually going to take just one minute break and come back in just a minute. I need to grab a drink. I will be back in just a sec to try to get Frank working in Wrapped and then probably wrap up the stream relatively soon. We came so close to getting these uh, mazes how I want them. Um, so we'll see if we can finish that up real quick, but I will be back in like one minute. Okay, I'm back to see how much we can get done if we try to finish up here quickly. Yeah. Um, A prime next direction. Yeah, but like I think I just need to give this some things. Um, give it a U8. Tell it work. Pick. Uh, no, custom. Part of my new stuff that I just added, uh, we're doing at least 50 by 50, so let's do 50 by 50. Uh, four snakes. The trait bound, okay, what's up? Uh, the trait bound A-prime di next direction is not implemented for. Really thought it was A-prime. A prime next direction. Yep. What are you implemented for? I implemented you for game. Oh, and that's it. Two position? Like, there's definitely a two position. Right? Can I make a position out of you? Um. Yeah, there definitely is. How do I go from a native position to a position? Um, is it like self dot position from native?
Uh, expected type native position type. Isn't that what you get? It's a reference to it. Direct. Cool. Uh, start back move from vector c what is c next coordinate next coordinate <laughs> which is a dang what are you oh huh. um uh, string you're not a string I just, I think I want this move. That's basically what I was trying to find out. I just wasn't, it just wasn't telling me the answer. Position from native. Okay, so I'm just trying to convert this to that. This is supposed to be a self. This needs to dereference it. Just fucking clone it, I don't care. Uh, I can clone you, I don't care. Yay! Okay, I think we just got Frank working in raft mode. Let's try a game. Uh, no. But, uh, not sure why. Oh, we're just straight going up every time. Is something just broken? Yeah. Oh, because I totally really knows how to play raft. Um,. Oh, the game mode also doesn't know how to do wrapped. Oh, okay. Well, that was not worth the adventure, unfortunately. Um, but I actually want to do the exact same thing down here. The only thing is I'm going to change that to standard. Um, so now we can at least keep playing. Um, but it's still... I don't think. I don't think we're actually playing wrapped. So we do need to make these mazes a little bit better in the sense of I need to actually be able to get from one side to the other. So like if I follow up, let's do it with my mouse so you guys can see too. If we follow up here, we can go up, we can go around, we can get up. Yeah, see, and there's this, there's just a wall all the way down here that, mm, see, uh, yeah, this, this piece. Where you came from, I don't know, but you sat right in front of, um... The bad place <laughs> um okay so let's see if we can remove i know what's happening it's um let's go to it's in excalibur um what's happening is let's do a better one like this so we drew a a wall and then we do another wall and then we we we, we subdivided it right like we, we cut some holes in the wall Love it. So one iteration works perfectly. But then the next iteration, if we're looking at this one up here, it needs... There's two exclusions, right? It can't put a vertical wall here, and it can't put a horizontal wall here. Um, it also can't... Did I do... Did I leave that back in? Um, I also realizing that, like, in this subdivision, it actually doesn't make any sense to put a wall on either of these places. I can never put walls on the zeros, and down here I can't ever put walls on those, so I do have to go in the middle. Um, but I think I have that logic figured out. Um, but let's look. Highest x minus y minus 2 plus 1. Yep, okay, so we're doing that for both. So we're, we're always picking just the mids, which is why I think my 4 is probably a good number here, because if the difference is 4 then there's really only two to pick from because we're gonna get rid of two yeah okay so 
Yeah, you can't go more than that. That's fine. We like that. Um, I could maybe make that five just to make things a little bigger, but I actually kind of like that at the moment. The only thing I need to do is um, add some disallowed horizontal, horizontal, uh, which is an integer, and a disallowed vertical, also an integer. I like disallowed being capitalized. Does it really matter? No. Um, okay. While vertical wall position equals 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 negative one four disallowed. Keep picking a new one. No prints. Nope, it wanted prints. Is it that it wants something like that? Uh, go wild or? Four. Wait, what? Okay. Okay, whatever. Four. Yep. Yep. Okay, um, so then are these like the same for all of these? Do I always want disallowed horizontal and disallowed vertical? Horizontal. Do I set them anywhere though? Yeah. Um, disallowed vertical equals vertical wall position. Disallowed horizontal equals horizontal wall position. Isn't there like a go format thing that's supposed to like make this all pretty for me? Oh, I didn't mean to end up in that. Okay, thanks, go for it, man. Um, moment of truth. Not enough arguments in call. Ah, yep, that's fine. It's correct. Oh, and it still doesn't work? Oh, man, I thought that was going to be it. This one's closer, though. I think what I really want to build is a way to visualize um, the, the number of subdivisions as we go. So I can see where there's an issue that starts creating a hole. Let's see if we can do that really quick. That seems fun. Um... This is gonna, like, we're making this code really, really ugly. And it's great. than zero oh. ah.
Okay, max step. Uh settings dot turn. Do settings have a turn on it, you think? No, settings doesn't have a turn on it. That doesn't make any sense. Uh one. Uh, this isn't gonna work well. I would need to embed more data, which I like. I do. I did talk about how I wanted to do that at some point, but this step thing isn't gonna work right now. It's okay. I'm gonna undo it. Uh, like it's really cool, but I have to, like keep the state of where my subdivided rooms are at each depth, and that doesn't sound super duper fun to me. Um. Oh, but we are like so close to getting a really nicely made. Oh, wait a sec. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait a sec. If I do avert a horizontal line here, that's the same. Okay. Uh, well, no, but I can't do zero. I already can't do zeros and ends. And, like, that would be fine, except I disallowed it because of that. Yeah, I'm really close, but like, if I drew, but I already disallowed drawing a horizontal line here, so then like, any horizontal line here should be fine, because I can like, horizontal it, make a hole in it, that still looks right. And then like, I could make this, we do that. And then we have to pick one of these two to get rid of. That's the lo like I already have that logic. Oh look at this! I've made myself. I just followed my own algorithm and made myself an unsolvable maze. Cool. What if that means I just need to do all four instead of three? They were doing three, and it like was maybe working, but I think I might need to do all four. What I mean by that is all four cuts in the board. Um, where I am right here, oof, kind of already did that to do, um, so if they're both here, okay, so I think I still need to cut the second point here. Intersection of point applies to both. So. Function. Cut holes. It takes in a array of points. It takes in a intersection, which is a rules dot point. That's basically all. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we find the indo. Oops. We find the index of our intersection. Uh, so this is in our S, find the intersection point. Uh, it's just called intersection. Okay, so we find that. Uh, the first segment to remove is just finding the first half. Oh, this needs a rand. Rules.rand, I believe. Yeah. Um. S equals S. I literally don't think this is actually going to work now that I'm looking at it. Um, I think I need to return that. Oh, I'll just return S at the end.
Um, S, 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 intersection. Oh, wow, that was easy. Okay, um, so now I can go up here and we need to cut holes in the walls. New vertical wall equals cut holes. Intersection point. New horizontal holes, yeah. cutting holes out the idea was that I actually wanted to cut holes I wanted to cut two holes in both so you find a wall find the intersection point and you want holes cut in both sides there um but that didn't solve my issue I have a new theory about what's causing me issues though I keep pulling up that code it's not what I want um this subdivision of rooms Yeah, there's only one intersection point, ain't there? All right. Oh, but those aren't the ones that I want to be disallowed at all. So the problem is that the, 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 the disallowed horizontal and verticals aren't right here. Because these want to be the holes, which is not what I have it at the moment. Because I say, if you did a horizontal wall position... Yeah, but it's not at all based on these. These are wrong. Like, this is like, probably gonna just keep doing, like, literally the same thing. Yeah, okay. Um... Keep track of where I cut the holes. Uh, return multiple values go. Pretty sure I can do this. Yeah, just two bullet. Two of them. Okay, so I'm returning the. Return value is first the wall that has been cut. Second is the holes we cut out. Holes. And holes at first index to remove. Mm 
Okay, so we return those, but then when I use them, now I need... Vertical holes. Oh no, no, horizontal holes. Um, okay, so disallow to horizontal. These all need to be arrays. Which means that up here... I don't know if I can do this, but can I just make them DMP arrays? No. Make. Um, int array needs zero. Int array, array events, array events. I think it might be array events. somewhere and just copy it. Yeah, this is the opposite. Yeah, so why is that working? Okay, there we go. Okay, that's fine though. Um... Includes. I have to write this one myself too. Contains and disallowed vertical vertical wall position. Contains in this horizontal wall position. Too many, but yep. Okay. Perfect. Yep. These aren't used. Disallowed. Vertical equals uh, go map over slice. Um.
Mm, okay, still didn't fix that problem. We're getting close. This like looks really maze-like. And like there's just a few Oh like why? What are you doing there? If you weren't there, this maze would be so completable. Like where where did you come from? Okay, well we're close. We're close. Okay, well, we made it so close, but we just can't, we can't get there. Okay, the delay was better. Oh, wow, that time it was just, like, in his own little box. Oh, I lost it, because I did a new game. Okay, well, we got pretty close. We can make a maze, we just have to debug why there are some time why there's no path through the maze um need to figure out if the algorithm doesn't always do that or if i have a bug in my usage of the algorithm which seems like the more likely scenario um this has been an awesome stream thanks for coming along with me today we are really close to having a full map um and then we'll have to figure out how we do levels and all kinds of things like that um but we did we made a really good progress on map generation today so so i'm pretty happy with the results uh, thanks for coming along and tuning in. Um, be sure to tune in next week where we, you know, try to finish off this map. Uh, have a good Sunday, everyone, and I will see you next week. Bye.